Hey chemistry, Mrs. KJ here going over 2.02 .02, Boyle's Law. So have your calculator, pen, and paper ready. So Boyle's Law, and actually we'll be talking about two other laws, all have to do with how gases interact. So we're going to start out with a quick review of what is a gas. Matter exists in several states, solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. Like all matter, gases have mass, but they have no definite shape or volume. They will fill whatever container they are placed in and thus take the shape of that container. Scientists now know that a gas consists mostly of empty space interspersed with atoms and molecules. So in other words, the molecules are far apart. The atoms and molecules are in constant motion, as is all phases of matter, but of course they move rapidly, collide with each other, bounce off, and collide with the walls of the container. So it's a crazy party. So today we're going to touch specifically on volume and pressure. So a gas is composed of atoms and or molecules. They are in motion, which is where we're going to talk about temperature and diffusion. The gas is composed of atoms or molecules that take up space. Anything that takes up space has volumes. Gas composed of atoms and or molecules have space between them, which is pressure, making them compressible. So because there's space in between, we can squeeze and force them closer together. So today we are focusing just on pressure and volume. What are some units of volume? So for example, I would say your computer has a volume of 35 watt. You could use milliliters. We usually use those for liquids or centimeters cubed or cubic centimeters. And it means how much space something takes up. So the volume is how much space something takes up. And just a reminder of how you get centimeters cubed, it's because it's length times width times height. So five centimeters times five centimeters times five centimeters gives you 125 centimeters cubed. You have to multiply the units as well. So that's volume. Now let's talk about pressure. Okay, so what is pressure? I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. You can't get mad. I'm not touching you. All right, so pressure is more specifically force divided by area. A good way to think about it is what hurts more? Getting stepped on by a cow or a person? Well, it depends. Yes, the cow weighs more, but what if the cow steps gently on your foot and the person slams their foot down onto you? I can tell you it would hurt more from the person. Okay, so speed of impact matters. That's part of force. Okay, so pressure is the fact that you're pushing on something or touching something and the speed at which you push on something or touch something is going to impact how much force and how much it hurts. Okay, so what if they were stepping on you with the same speed? What else could be different? Well, it has to do with the area, okay? The average woman can put more pressure on a spot with her stilettos than an elephant. And up here I showed you the math. You don't need to know this, but I want to show you how and why it works. So pressure is force divided by area. So a 60 kilogram woman, which probably doesn't mean anything to you, right? But 60 times 2.02, .02, someone that weighs 132 pounds. They are wearing stilettos, these very, very high heels with a very, very small point. They are putting 3 million newtons worth of force over a meter squared. An elephant, okay, which is, I don't know, hundreds of times bigger than this person, right? Okay, and because they have a bigger area, all their weight's going on this entire foot, and, you know, yes, they did divide it by the fact that there's four feet, okay? And they divided this one by the fact that there's two feet. But it's this little tiny stiletto spot versus the big elephant foot. And the elephant only has 125,000 newtons per meter squared. So you can see there's a lot more pressure happening with the stiletto. And that's why when in summer times you go walking on the lawn with heels, your heels sink in because it's making you heavier than an elephant, even if you only weigh 130 pounds, 
okay? So that's what pressure is. It's how much force is on a certain area. Gases exert pressure. So take a balloon, place one or two breaths of air in it, and tie it off. Take your finger and press on one side of the balloon and let go. Okay, so just close your eyes and imagine that you're doing that. You press on the balloon, what happens? You let go, and you placed a little dimple in the balloon, right? It indented, and then you let go, and the original shape came back. Why? Well, think about it. If you had a ball of Play-Doh and you pushed your finger in it, it would leave the space where your finger was. But the balloon bounces back. So that shows us when you let go, the air inside the balloon exerted an outward force that restored the balloon's shape. It pushed back and popped the balloon back into shape. So gases exert a force. Specifically, the air molecules inside collide with the walls of the balloon and exert the force. We call that force pressure. Another example, think of your car tires. You can measure the force exerted per unit area inside a tire with a pressure gauge. If you've ever used one, you know when you put it on the nozzle, this part comes out until it has an equal amount of pressure as the air inside the tire, and it tells you what the air pressure is. So if you've done that, you know that we measure it in PSI, or pounds per square inch. Well, in chemistry, we can also measure it in atmospheres, millimeters of mercury, like they used to use mercury in thermometers. Now they use the red alcohol because we know how dangerous mercury is. We can measure pressure in tors, pascals, or kilopascals. And I just want to talk a quick little bit about atmospheres of pressure. Right now, the air around you is pushing on you, okay, because, well, unlike this picture, okay, the air is really touching you all over, right? And so right now it's pushing on you with a force of 14 pounds. So it's like there's 14 pounds on your eyeballs right now and on your hands. And if you're thinking that, wait a minute, 14 pounds per square inch, how come I can't feel that? Well, it's because it's always been that way your whole life, and we're used to it. So our body doesn't even notice, and our bodies have adapted to deal with that much pressure on them all the time. So the air is pushing on you all the time, and because in chemistry, instead of using pounds per square inch, or 14 PSI, okay, we use one atmosphere. Ah, oh, look at that. These are equal. One atmosphere is the same as 14.7 pounds per square inch, which is how hard the air is pushing on you right now. And that's why if some of you get headaches when the weather changes, it's because it's a different amount of air pressure on your sinuses, right above and below your eyes, and it is pushing on you harder and it hurts. So some people actually get headaches from that. All right, pressure and volume interactions. Gases are compressible. So now take your balloon and squeeze on it with both hands, assuming it doesn't pop. What happens? The balloon probably shrinks or compresses, right? Like in this picture, you can do that. Why? As you increase the squeeze on the balloon, you increase the outside pressure on the air inside. So in other words, you're increasing the pressure on the balloon. Because the air inside is mostly empty space, remember when we go back up to this picture, there's a lot of space in between the molecules we're forcing the molecules closer together. This is a feature of gases. We call that being compressible. All right, so think about this. Fill another balloon with water and tie it off. Now try squeezing it again. Do you need to squeeze the balloon harder or more softly to get it to shrink? Does it shrink at all? Well, if you don't have an air bubble in there, it probably finds that if the balloon does shrink at all, getting it to shrink requires a lot more pressure and you probably can't get it to shrink very much overall. In contrast to gases, liquids are not as compressible. Therefore, liquids are used in hydraulic lifts, such as those used to lift cars in service garages. It's how your brakes work. It's how if you were driving a car at 60 miles an hour and you put your feet out, uh, you would not have feet, right? But think about it. Use your foot and you barely tap on the brakes and you can magically stop your car. Well, it's not magic. It's because of hydraulics and the pressure on the liquid. So pressure is happening in two directions. Remember the gas is pressing out, so when you let go, 
this goes back to being a perfect sphere, but you are pushing on the ball. So you are changing the volume of the ball. All right, what about if there's less pressure? Okay, so this shows putting more pressure on the gas. Less pressure, there's not a lot of examples, but this is a great one. Inside a fire extinguisher is carbon dioxide, and when you open the valve, it's not pressurized, and so it sprays and spreads out, like a can of hairspray or anything aerosol, or if you use mousse or that fake whipped cream stuff that comes in a pressurized can. It's squeezed together, and when there's less pressure, it gets bigger. So the CO2 was pressurized, being pushed together, but once the valve opens, the carbon dioxide gas has less pressure and it spreads out. So main idea of this lesson, the more pressure on a balloon, the blank space it takes up, the less space it takes up. Therefore, we can say if we increase the pressure, the volume decreases. If we decrease the pressure, if we relax, the volume spreads out. It's all relaxed and comfortable. The volume increases. All right, this slide. You don't need to know, but I want to show it to you um, just because I know some of you do like to think mathematically, and I want to show you this. So look at the mathematics of Boyle's Law. So Boyle is a scientist who found the relationship between pressure and volume. Boyle found that at constant temperature, the volume of the gas is inversely related to its pressure. Inversely meaning when one goes up, the other one goes down. Mathematically, Boyle's Law can be stated like this, PV equals K, where P is pressure, V is volume, and K is a constant. The more useful representation of Boyle's Law is the pressure of the first object times the volume of the first object equals the pressure of the object after you do something to it times the volume of the object after you do something to it, or P1V1 equals P2V2. Where P1 and P2 are two pressure values, where V1 and V2 are the corresponding values, volumes, you can use this equation to calculate an unknown volume when you are given known pressures and volumes. You can also use it to calculate an unknown pressure when you are given known volumes and a pressure. So it shows it on the gas. When my pressure is high, my volume is low. When my volume is high, my pressure is low. So they're opposites or inversely related. Okay, if you've been zoning out, time to wake up because this is what you all need to do. Boyle's Law is the original pressure times the original volume equals the new pressure times the new volume or P1V1 equals P2V2. If volume goes up, pressure went down. So mathematically, here's an example. My pressure started out as five. My volume started as three. If my pressure goes to three, my volume has to go up to five because five times three equals three times five. No, the numbers are never ever this pretty when you actually have to do these equations, but I wanted to show it to you this way so you could see the mathematical relationship. All right, let's do one. A 2.0 liter balloon has a pressure of 203 kilopascals. When the pressure increases to 1,015 kilopascals, what is the volume? Okay, step one. Again, we have steps. We're going to follow the patterns to figure out these types of problems. Step one, list what you know and which variable each number is. You have to know your units. L stands for what? Liters. Does liters measure volume or pressure? It measures volume. All right, so that's what we're starting out as. We're starting out that my volume is 2.0 liters. And it has a pressure of 203 kilopascals. Well, this tells you it's pressure, but you need to know kPa kilopascals, anytime you see that, that's your pressure. All right, when the pressure increases to 1,015 kilopascals, so is 1,015 kilopascals our P2 or V2? Kilopascals is our unit for pressure, under pressure, and it is P2. So we are solving for volume. Now, I know this number. I know my second volume. Is it going to be more or less than 2.0? And how do you know? 
my video is going to cut off. I will reveal the answer. I know you just can't wait in part two.